All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Tonight, we're going to run through a little quick video. Uh, this one is coming to you by request. A lot of you guys have been having an issue with double stamping or shadowing or ghosting or just fat text, however you want to describe it, because I've heard it all those different ways. Uh, what happens is basically, it's like your laser is doing text twice, like it's double stamping. And it's, it's this weird anomaly, but it's an easy fix. You just got to know what to look for and how to check for it. So that's what we're going to go over in this video. And hopefully it won't take us too long. So let's drop down and get started, guys. So this is what I'm referring to. I've had several people ask me, like, clack, man, something's going on. My machine is basically doing two sets of text, but I've only got it set to output one layer, but it's doing it twice, and it's offset, okay? This is the same, just to let you guys know, this text is exactly the same text. All I did was change some machine settings from one to the other, and what I wanna do in this video is just real quickly go through how to test this, what to look for, and how to adjust it. We're gonna to go to edit, device settings, and when you go to edit and device settings, right down here in this bottom left corner, you should see where it says scanning offset adjustment. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to click that enable, and then you're gonna to wanna to put your settings in here. Uh, if you have the Polar Plus, and you're having you know some issues, or you wanna try my uh, settings, I will see about uh, offloading that to uh, Google Drive and I'll link it to you guys so you can just download it and you can actually import it here. First of all, what exactly is this setting? That's what some of you are wanting to know. And so basically in a nutshell guys, the setting is the timing in which when the laser is moving, the, the timing, there's a delay, you can either reverse it or forward the delay uh, of when the laser fires in relation to where it is. What happens is the laser fires early here and it fires early back this way. This is not that noticeable. This is a uh, little anodized aluminum card and I had to take this picture and zoom in to be able to see this. But I'm gonna show you how to set up a little square and run this and you'll be able to see it on your own uh, in your settings. But you're gonna wanna set this for basically any speed that you could be using in your laser. All right, the way to set this up, do a little quick test, is just make yourself a square box. It doesn't have to be perfect. It does not matter. Uh, it doesn't need to be really big. Uh, what you can do, usually what I'll do is like maybe a 10 by 10, uh, just big enough to be able to see the thing. Uh, and then we're going to set that in the work area. Go over here to your cuts and layers. On that shape, what you want to do is you want to go in here and you want to make sure it's on one pass, of course, Set it to the, the speed. If your machine is capable of running 600 millimeters a second, I would test it at 600 and then go down to 500, 400, so forth, all right? So what you're gonna wanna do is set an adequate power setting in here so whatever your test material is, you're not gonna start a fire or anything, and then go to lines per inch and set that guy to 50. What that's gonna do is that's gonna, like when, when this sends to the laser, the lines are gonna be so far apart that you're actually going to be able to see that offset like we can in this photo uh, that I've got over here. Well, <laughs> the one that I had up on the screen here. So that's what you want to do. You want This is what you want them to look like. You want them to be perfectly uh, flat here. You, want, you don't want this to be up and down, up and down. You want it to be just straight up and down. But more than likely, it's not going to be. Not unless you've already adjusted this with your machine. Uh, the cheapest machine up to the most expensive machine I have heard of people having to adjust this uh, It's basically just the latency of the system uh, When you add it to light burn, there's gonna be there's gonna be some adjustments needed to make be made once you get this set You should be good shouldn't be a problem and to be honest if you're running your machine really really slow You may never notice it uh, because the slower you go The less noticeable it's gonna be you won't really notice it that much until you get into things like this right here. If you'll notice, this is exactly the same text. You can see here, we've got rougher edges here than we do here, but that's because of that over travel. It's making it have these little, little rough edges around the corners. Uh, you'll also notice that the text on this side is slightly wider than the text on this side because we're going from left to right. Uh, with the laser and so you wind up the text looks longer because this is 300 
uh, lines per inch. So the overlap doesn't allow you to see where those two lines are, you know, separate li uh, links until you get into the really small stuff like this. And because the text basically is thinner than the offset, you end up with these two images right here. You've got you basically a shadow of the text because it's, it's not firing accurately. So these little bitty shapes like this, little bitty text are going to be where you're going to most of the time, that's going to be where, this is what usually gets people to call me and go, Clack, man, I was making some business cards and my machine is doing this. What is going on? And that's usually what it is. Like Again, just create yourself a little square, set it to the speed. I would use the maximum speed of my machine and then walk my way back from there. Set it to 50 lines per inch. And then once you you run that, uh, you'll, you'll wind up getting these little boxes. And, and like I said, they don't have to be very big. The biggest thing that you want to be able to determine is are these lines even? And you can see here, this is this is me running some adjustment tests on the Ohm Tech. Uh, some of this is overly exaggerated. I just created an artificial offset just to show you how extreme it can be. Now, I will say this, I've seen some machines, the faster they run, the worse this will be. So if you've got a machine that'll run eight, 900 millimeters a second, this is gonna get exponentially uh, worse uh, when you start getting it dialed in is when you start seeing it like this now you can drive yourself crazy trying to get this stuff exactly right but there's no need of getting it perfect uh, once you get this as close as is reasonably possible then when you put your lpi back the way that it's supposed to be you're not going to see this your your text is going to be the proper width your little tiny letters are going to come out appropriately you're only going to notice a big difference on this, guys, when you're doing the little tiny text or either you'll notice that your text is just a little wide. So there you go. This is what your results are going to look like. If it looks like this, you're going to want to start adding some offset to it. Uh, once you get it to looking like this guy here or you get it to looking like this guy here, you can go ahead and lock that thing down, export that file, hang on to it, share it with a friend, whatever, because you've got it right. This no go, go. No go, go. That's the way you want to look at it right there. So once you've ran that test and you see that, yes, I have a problem. I need to add some offset. Keep in mind, guys, this is tiny, tiny amount of offset. Uh, you can try to measure it with a caliber if you would like. Uh, I don't have any luck with that. Uh, but what you're going to want to do is you're going to go in here, make sure you enable uh, scanning offset adjust, and then you're going to hit this add button. Whatever the target speed that you're testing for and you're adjusting for, you're going to want to add that here. So you can put like 150. All right. Once you, you know, at first you're probably going to do like I did and just kind of play whack-a-mole and drop numbers in here. So like you could go with, you know, 0 .00, like right here, I would probably go with 0 .00, zero, uh, zero 0.09, you know, for 150. Uh, and then test that. See how close they are together. If they're really close together, you like the results, just leave it in there. So that's that's what I've wound up doing. Yes, you can do it differently, probably using the initial offset, using the previous one or whatever. I've been doing everything in the line shift. It's working for me. So, you know, if you're one of those guys that, hey, there's this other way you can do it. Okay, that's cool. But this is the way I've been doing it. It's working for me. I'm getting good results. And uh, folks were asking me how I address this issue. And so that's what this video is about. It's not about the perfect way, the best way, the only way. It's about the way that I approach this issue. So this machine is only capable of running 600 millimeters per second. Anything over that, it's not, I'm not going to be running it. And so that's why you'll notice here I've calibrated my line shift out to 600, but nothing beyond that. So there you go, guys. I hope that helps. Uh, one thing that I will tell you is once you get this set the way you like it, uh, you can export this and take it to your, you know, favorite file location and go in here. And it's like I've got mine already backed up right here. Uh, this is going to be my light burn offsets for this particular machine. Save them in a folder. We're good to go. Uh, reason that I like doing that is if I actually install this machine on another computer, I can just bring that file in. I don't have to do all this testing over again. Or like you guys, if you have an Ohm Tech Polar Plus and you want to try my settings with your machine, 
See if it works, then that's great. You can download those and install them and try them out. Maybe make some smaller adjustments if needed. So if you want to try those, I'll drop those in there. If you want to spend yourself a few minutes and have a little fun doing the testing yourself, you can do that also. But let's uh, jump out of here and wrap it up, guys. All right, guys, so there's my little test piece of material. This is just like some little scratch paper. Uh, I used this to get it dialed in. Once I got it dialed in, of course, uh, I went over to the anodized cards. These anodized cards work really, really well. You will need either a microscope or take a picture of this with your phone and zoom in, unless you have really good eyes. Uh, but I, I can tell, you know, when it's there, but it's hard for me to really get a gauge of, of how drastically it changes unless I put them close together and then take a picture and, and zoom in. So that's my little card that I did to confirm that everything was working right. Like I said, some of these I exaggerated the offset incorrectly just so you guys could see it and better understand uh, how bad it was. This machine wasn't that bad off, uh, but it was bad enough that I could notice it, uh, especially on acrylic or something like that, when I was doing real fine text, I could notice it. That's what led me the other day. I went in and did a real quick uh, calibration for the speeds that I was running on a project, but then I made myself a little sticky note and was like, adjust it through the rest of the spectrum. That way I don't forget and mess up a blank because you know I had it calibrated at 100, I had it calibrated at 500, but I had no data for the ones in between. So, so there you go. Uh, here is, in, in case you couldn't see it really good in the other set, that's the, that's the little card I did. And you can see it's a little more noticeable in this format that the text, the text over here that where the offset is incorrect, it looks a lot wider than the other text. This text looks a little sharper and all that. So if you start noticing that your text is a little fatter than it should be, or like right there in the E, see how the E doesn't have the little dot the way that it should? A lot of times that's gonna be the culprit if it's a CO2. Now, typically with your diode machines, guys, this isn't a thing. Uh, but with CO2 machines, every one I've had so far, I've had to adjust slightly. I think the only one that I didn't adjust was the P2. And it may be that I just didn't know how to adjust it on the P2. <laughs> so I never use it with light burn. Maybe XCS got it worked out. But anyway, guys, if you have a desktop CO2, not a bad idea. Run this test. Check your machine before you mess up a blank. You know, and it gives you a lot crisper image. But anyway, guys, I hope the video was helpful. Uh, like I said, I've had several people. I think I've had like three or four people in the past couple of weeks reach out to me with, you know, different machines, whether it be the Atom Stack Hurricane uh, the ohm tech machine, the Monport machines, whatever, and having similar issues. So I think maybe it's one of those things that's overlooked by a lot of uh, guys that have the desktop CO2s or even the big CO2s. And just the other day, I actually found a Thunder nope. had not been adjusted, and it had a serious case of offset because at 100 inches per minute, the offset, it was basically doing the shadowing of text to like 30 point font text and it was insane but we fixed it adjusted it and it worked great all right guys so there you have it i hope the video was helpful entertaining amusing or whatever but do me a favor if you watch this video and you test your machine drop down below in the comments let me know whether you had to make adjustments to yours or not also let me know if the video was helpful uh, i get a lot of questions and after i get a question so many times I tend to try to put a video out to uh, head off any folks out there that are having trouble that maybe just don't want to reach out and ask the question. So feel free to drop a comment down below. Let me know whether you checked your machine. Did it need adjustment? Uh, is this beneficial to you? All that good stuff. Uh, good feedback is always welcomed uh, and even some of the not so good feedback. But another thing, guys, Sunday night, 7 p.m., uh, Steve over at Ventari's Workshop and I, we do our live show. We've been doing it for close to a little over two years now, I think. Uh, we're at, you know, 100 and some odd uh, episodes. It's, it's a really, really fun show. We answer questions. We talk about business, business management, all the things that surround our shop, uh, businesses, life, whatever you want to call it. 
and we have a really good time. So uh, also the laser engraving community page is kind of our hub that we use to keep up with the community and let people know about things. So be sure to go check out that group on Facebook if you're a member of Facebook and also Sunday nights, 7 p.m. Come sit down with us, uh, listen to the show. If you got any questions, you can throw those in the comments and maybe, you know, have a good time too. <laughs> to boot, we hope it's entertaining. But anyway, guys, I appreciate you uh, sitting through the video. Thanks for coming. And until next time, be safe and have a good day.